Hey everyone, this is Greg Comparic. I'm the editor of MobileCrunch.com. Uh, if you come from TechCrunch and you've heard of MobileCrunch, it is the best mobile blog on the entire internet. Uh, and if that's not true, then it's at least the best mobile blog on the TechCrunch network, which I <laughs> hope is true. So we're here with MG Siegler, and we're talking about this guy right here. It's the Droid 2. It just came out two days ago. Which I also so, have right here. Blam. Yeah, I was at the Google event two days ago, and they... Um, they handed these things out. Um, it wasn't a very big event, but they, that was mainly to show off some of the new voice uh, capabilities, voice search capabilities in uh, Android 2.2, and they have a new app uh, for it. But yeah, the phone itself, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I mean, you're, you're much more versed in you know, the Android space than I am, obviously. I come from a, a long uh, iPhone background here. But uh, I've you know, been highly critical of different Android devices in the past, specifically the Evo. Um, but I do like the Nexus One. This one, I think, is kind of in the middle. Um, it's still, you know, it's only been two days that I've been playing with it, but it's like, eh, it's like a little bit too thick. It's maybe, uh, maybe a, a little bit too, uh, feels a little bit too plasticky. But uh, otherwise, it's a pretty nice device. I don't know. I mean, you played with it for a few seconds. What do, what do you think about this thing? I, I like the Droid 1, and I like this better than the Droid 1. So. Yeah, what do you like better about this one than the Droid 1? Everything, actually. The, uh, the design is a little bit better. If you look on the back here, on the, uh, the Droid 1, they didn't really... Uh, actually, they do it here, too. They don't design the speaker grill right. So after a couple months, you start putting a dent in that speaker grill, and it's little things like that that after a couple months, you just really start to dislike the phone. I didn't even realize there was a speaker grill. I thought there was a way to like shove off and get the battery in there or something. It's yeah, kind of I, interesting. I, I don't know what it is, but I had my Droid 1 for about two and a half months, and I put a big old ding right there. Was so, the, was, did the Droid 1 have like a, like a, was it slanted up on the back, kind of? A little bit. Yeah, this one uh, is Pretty, too, pretty so similar to that one, just a little bit harsher. Uh, yeah. So 10 word review, what would you say? Um, too thick, too heavy. Not iPhone. <laughs> All right. So speaking of which, how do you like it compared to your iPhone 4? Yeah, I mean, the iPhone 4, just, you know, I have this on the table right here. Just the feel of it, this thing feels like, you know, it's going to sound so fanboyish, but this thing feels like a work of art, and this thing feels like a total utility, kind of like, I don't know, just chintzy type of deal. Yeah. I mean, this thing is, I would definitely say, comparable to the... Uh, the iPhone 3GS and you know obviously the, the previous models. It's still thicker. It's still a little bit heavier. The problem, of course, there is the you know which operating system you like more. If you yeah. like iOS or if you like the Android thing. I'm still you know Android 2.2 is great. It's so much better than Android 2.1 was just in terms of speed. Like using it, switching from the Nexus One, which had 2.1 and now it has 2.2 on it. It seems like it's a lot faster and everything runs smoother, but it's still missing some level of polish that, that iOS has. Yeah. Do, do you think that too? The one thing I found is just with, with Apple, everything in the App Store, they all have to stick really stric strictly to uh, the human interface guidelines. Apple's yeah, right, you right. Know, preset standards. And with Android, there's not really that. Yeah, do you think that hurts them, though? Do you think that well, hurts these Well, apps? yeah, I mean, because if you, if you look at the apps that are on the Android market, it's like things like Foursquare and Facebook, they all look great. You know, but amongst like smaller indie apps, the worst apps on the iPhone still look better than most of the apps on Android. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's, I'm not trying to be a fanboy or pledge allegiance to any one platform. It's just, they don't tend to look that good. Yeah, so, but I mean, obviously apps are coming out rapidly for Android now, maybe even faster now than they are in terms of the rate coming out than they are for iPhone. But I mean, are people actually downloading these? I mean, obviously they are, but I mean, how can, how can, I just don't understand how they can possibly keep that ecosystem going forward, like exploding the way that it is. If these apps just aren't up to par, people just don't care, you know, that they're yeah. not as good. I mean, they, they love the openness. I mean, certainly the greatest thing about this is that it's on the Verizon network. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, already I have Signal in here, which is like, you know, some studio echo chamber, and I don't have any service on the uh, iPhone yeah. 4. I basically don't have it in the office at all, but to, that's a big selling Just point. to get a little bit more specific about this device and the new stuff, how do you feel about the new, the new voice control? Voice control stuff is cool. So they have the ability to, you know, say note to self, and then you can leave, you know, call my mother, and then it will open up a little uh, email message, and then you just hit that, and then you send it to yourself. You can also do things like listen to Beethoven, and even if you don't have that on your phone, it'll search the web, and then it will open it maybe in Pandora or Last.fm or yeah. some other app you have installed. That stuff is great, and that stuff is the kind of stuff that Apple, you know, they can't really do with, with Apple stuff. You know, Apple can do it themselves, obviously, but... Uh, Google's smart to play up some of those advantages they have. Certainly, with the, with the voice technology themselves, they've been working on that forever, and so they yeah. have a they have a big lead there. So to 
go against your self-titled fanboy label. Yeah. What, do you, what do you like better about this than the iPhone? I love the, the Google integration of the Google apps themselves, like uh, Gmail, Google Voice. Obviously, you can't do any Google Voice integration with the iPhone itself. But Maps, to Latitude, if you wanted to use that, you know, that's, all, that's all baked right into here, and that works very well. And you know, certainly some of the background tasks that you know, you're limited on the iPhone 4 from doing and you can do here. Obviously iOS 4 helped a little bit with that, doing things like running Pandora in the background, but there's still other tasks that you can do here which, are, which just seem to be better. And the notification system, or specifically the, the drawer that you, know, that you can bring down, I think is, is a lot more solid than, than what anything they have on iOS right now. Yeah. You've been running, you have another phone right here, you have a, a Sony one that they gave yeah, you. Yeah, this is, I haven't really spent enough time with it to uh, know about it, but it's the Xperia X10, which is their new phone for AT&T, which is uh, entirely... Ooh, that's pretty nice. What was that? that was yeah, that's their, their different lock screen. Okay. So you can swipe in there. Ooh, Just yeah. kind of a weird little thing. But uh, yeah, yeah, so that's you know, a completely different UI, obviously made by Sony. Just yeah. a custom, custom yeah, just, flavor. Just skin on top of that. But the problem is this phone has been out in the UK since April, I think. Oh, really? And it's still essentially the same phone it was in April, which means it's running 1.6. Hmm. And because of all that customization, it's going to take them a while to get it up. On, uh, they're not even going to be on 2.2 anytime soon. They're, it's going to be on 2.1 sometime in quarter three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's going to be kind of a hard sell. One, I mean, and I don't know, so that's on AT&T. AT&T, how, how do they do in terms of loading on the crapware onto Android devices? Same same deal. Same it's, deal. They yeah. like have their certain ones that they have deals with, and they yeah. load those on. If we pop into here, they have AT and T hotspots. Right. They have AT and T family maps, AT and T maps, AT and T navigator, AT and T radio. Right. It's a whole lot of AT and T, and you can't pull off a single one of them. And the thing that's even worse about AT and T's, you know, policies around Android is that they block all third party APKs, the Android install files that don't come from the Android market. Oh, really? So if it's, say, it's Swipe. Uh, I don't know yeah. if Swipe comes pre-installed on this one. It, it does on certain Android phones. Right. Uh, they had a beta, if, and, but that wasn't part of the Android market. You had to get it through Swipe. Can't do it on AT&T Android phones without rooting them or yeah. using some crazy uh, file manager that it's, it's all a big mess. Why do they want so much control over that? They say it's for the, the user's benefit, but even on, on any other Android phone, you have to go into the options and, you know, deliberately right, right. enable. Right, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass to do, but, but you can do it. That's yeah, the, point. the weird thing on this one is that it still gives, it's, it says, hey, you need to go into this menu option to enable this, and then you go in there, totally missing. <laughs> so it's the same thing on the, the Aria, on everything, on the, the back flip, or I can't remember what it's called this one. But. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and I mean, so this one is from Verizon, obviously, and they load up the Vcast and some other things. They have an NFL thing, which will be useful to people, but certainly not everyone, and it, it does kind of suck that they just load this crap on. And it was the same thing with the Evo. The Evo had, like, some NASCAR thing that yeah. they loaded on. Um, yeah, I mean... And it just drives me crazy that you can't remove it. I don't know if it's because it's part of the, the flashing process. They have to flash it to a certain part of memory that you can't erase, but... It's just ridiculous. At least give us the option to hide it. That's something kind of I've been wondering about too with you know all the rumors about the iPhone 4 coming to Verizon. You know, yeah. they've obviously been in negotiations forever, you know, some true, some not true, but yeah. they've been talking clearly. And uh, you know, Verizon has always kind of been this this player that wants to have the, specifically their Vcast stuff. I remember that from back in the day. Like they've been a huge, you know, pushing of that. Yeah. Do you think that that's like kind of might be a hold up in trying to get do you think that they would you mean like Verizon's crap being stuffed on here? Yeah, being no. stuffed on the iPhone. I mean, we've all heard the tales of AT and T and Apple in negotiating about right. what goes on the phone. I just think that in the end, Jobs comes down and says, "Hey, if you want our phone, right. don't, don't put this crap don't on it. You can put it. You can put it in the in the, in the app, app store. store. You have a thing. You yeah. can you can tout it all over the place, but right. it's not going on the phone. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing is is uh, it's Apple's pretty much the only one that controls every single step of the update process. Like. Uh, when they issue an, an update or anything, right. you know, it doesn't go through AT&T for all this crazy certification. Right. That's, yeah, it makes it great. So. Uh, but I mean, Verizon must make a good amount of money from those like Vcast things, you know, and when they sell shows and ringtones and stuff. Yeah. Are they? You think that they'll just be willing to cede that money? I think just for the, the fact that they'd be able to pull a lot, any of the, the people they've lost to AT&T because the iPhone, they can pull them back. I think it'll counteract the you know the seven or eight bucks they'd make for Vcast. I think they'd rather go for the 80, 90 bucks they get on the, <laughs> getting their contract back. Yeah, totally. So. All right. Well, cool, Greg. Right on. Thanks, MD. Yeah.